Because I'd like to see that other movie too, sometime. What other? The Joker. Chicago's a foul temptress who lures you in with the promises of riches, sweetmeats, and cold porter, only to chew you up and spit you out like a piece of gristle. That gristle is the fat that clings to the sides of a two-bit steak like a remora on a shark or a dame to a hood who doesn't have anything more in his pockets than a bullet with his name on it. Because the landlord's coming around and he's fresh out of saw books, and a picture of his mother to remind him of what he left behind in case all the booze in the world should ever make him forget. You bought the steak at a joint that makes your standard dive look like the Ritz Carlton, and it was served up by a broad who watches her life dance down the drain like a spider in a toilet bowl. 
if she serves a bunch of worthless mugs and experiences nothing more in life than greater and lesser degrees of disappointment. It's the type of hole in the wall that welcomes you in the front door and kicks you out the back, because you want nothing more than to run to the nearest dumpster and clear your guts of the cheap meal you just ate. When all said and done, you crawl into the trash and make a pillow of your mess, because it's the only thing you can call home in this war of a town. Any bird who sees this burg is anything but a floozy as a fool, because it doesn't take a genius to see the John Hancock Center and the Sears Tower for what they are. Two big tits of steel and glass, pointing up to the heavens, teasing angels and man alike. There's almost a seven mile stretch between those two beauties, and there isn't a Yegu live who doesn't dream of the joy he can experience in that stretch of asphalt and shame. But most are too yellow to ever live the dream, and for the rest who do, it soon becomes a nightmare. Nightmare is like that one dream where you're in the attic of your boyhood home. Except it's not the real attic, it looks different. But you don't know how to describe it, and there's five doors on the wall. You're looking for your Christmas presents, because you're really hoping you got cootie. But every door has your dead grandmother behind it. And she springs out and tries to drown you in a tray of blackberry cobbler while singing, Frog, he would a woo and go. It's not until you try to scream that you realize that the cobbler really doesn't have blackberries in it at all, because that rotten mummy filled it with daddy long legs and sugar snap peas. And before you could wonder what the hell the dream could mean, you're awake, in a puddle of your own urine and your mother's rushing in to comfort you with your deadbeat father's leather belt. Only the children that are beaten to sleep every night dream big about making it in this pavement jungle. There ain't many lugs dumb enough to try and tackle the demons who come out of those aspirations gone awry. But there are a few, and I'm one of them. Who am I? I'm Shannon Maddox. Hey, back here! I'm Shannon Madison. It's your mama saying, why you no get down here and come for a visit? Who you think it is? It's Fontaine de la Fontaine, your loving partner. Now get down to the diner for some dejeuner frequency. I'm a two blocks away from your front door as the crow flies. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I hate waking up from a nightmare. Sometimes they leave me so disoriented I barely know who I am. My wallet tells me all I need to know. My name, address, and financial status. Broke. One fin to my name. Sure, a stooge like myself can stretch that into a cup of coffee, some saltwater taffy, and a hand job, but that will only kill ten minutes at best. In the end, it's rotten teeth for everyone involved, and I'll be rooming in a cardboard flat on Skid Row by Christmas. Happy fucking holidays. Hello, Fontaine? Voila, ce soir. Et donc, be Jean Dehors, la cour. Alright. Oh, you don't mind if I'm on chair. I order some more beef pork, boudin, brulot, vinet, and bouillon beef. But oh, look, I'm afraid I ordered try too much food to eat both food. You hungry, mon ami? I think I'm okay. C'est la vie. Allo, beaucoup mer. 
This lack of detective work, c'est très mal. We'll be broke by sundown, and it don't matter if the bill man is a pea shot. He want his money all the same. Yeah. Detective work. Come on, say bye. Everything all right up there? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I just must have been the nightmare I had earlier. I think it scrambled my brain or something. I don't know. C'est tout bon. Tu dois appeler Shannon Madison. And with this partner, Fontaine de la Fontaine, we sit around going poor and wait for some poor Bill film to hire us. Et voilà. I know that now. I think it's just the city. It's getting to me or something. It's like it's eating away at my identity. Cool. She can plan what you need. That's why I'm all called you here, you see? This bon matin. To tell you that moi is leaving la bibliothèque. I'm gonna go home to my raison d'etre. No orders. You mean to tell me you're ditching me to slum in fucking New Orleans? Of all places? Moi will vive avec la crocodiles, uh, crawdads, uh, fiddleheads, thunder chicken, and from our station to Andalou. Uh, I'll get three fatigue, uh, uh, down the piscine avec the uh, fat of wind, the uh, count plunge, uh, you yeah. know. I was on it, and she was on it. I will get three fatigue, uh, fatigue. Oh, oh, oh. From the Remula, the Juste Orange, the Juste Fromage, the Vue, s'il vous plaît. Voilà. Don't worry about it, though, mon ami. Je still adore you. Voila. All right. It's way too early in the morning for this. I'm gonna split it. No, 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 I don't see what the issue is about a dame pouring communists in her summer house. Chickens do it every day, but that doesn't stop every mug on the street from ordering an omelet. I suppose if joints called it scrambled hen periods, no one would buy, except me. I should have ordered breakfast at the diner. Damn, I was hungry. Voila, ça tourne un shortcut. Next Fontaine. I ain't going down there. Well, there's probably a silverfish down there. Fast? Uh, you know, a silverfish. It gets behind wallpapers and in bottles and stuff. And there's probably a brown recluse or two down there as well. Oh, and if they bite you... C'est la vie. Where the danger at? Take a powder on me, it's just a little lead poisoning! Well, it's human blood, all right. Dr. Scrumpox, how's my partner doing? 
not so good. Uh, right now, your partner is in an unresponsive state. Oh, he, he's still alive. Fontaine is what we in the medical profession call a vegetable. Jury's still out on this one. But it may be the problem of these 17 bullet holes in his head. That might be what's calling this problem. But he, he, he's going to be OK, right? Well, my diagnosis or prognosis, whatever it is, I, I get those confused, that your friend should be able to live a very healthy, normal lifestyle in a brain-dead state. He can? No. But I have a little consolation for you. I have some candy. It's an hour later. Persimmon flavored. Enjoy. Well, aren't you gonna eat it now? I thought I'd save it for later. Get the Sam Hill out of my office. When I was a kid, I always heard that if you acted like a hood, then Santa would bring you a lump of coal for Christmas. My partner must have gotten pretty gas house, cause Santa brought him over a dozen lumps of coal. Coal made out of lead. Lead shaped into bullets. Bullets fired from a gun into his head. How many memories could a single slug take away? Would one wipe out all the images of his mother or that little reminder that tells you to check the barn door after you take a leak? Would he even remember me? There's one thing I knew for sure. Not one or 17 bullets can make me forget the kitten that strolled in then. Please tell me, little girl. Tell me what you got on your mind. You were his partner? Please yeah. Tell me Name's Shannon Madison. Evelyn Thrust, it's a pleasure. Pray tell me what you got on your mind. Care for an hour later? I was saving it for later, but I think that later is now. You're now. Someone sure moves fast. Well, ladies I've been intimate with do tend to call me quick draw. I'll say your partner takes a hail of bullets to the face, and next thing you know, you're hitting on his fiance. Wait, no, 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 no. I was just trying to be chivalrous and a gentleman, and, and I didn't mean to. I'm just pulling your leg. Relax. I do hate to see him like this, though. He looks like he's in an awful lot of pain. Yeah, well. I think I can fix that. The time has come for me to give old Santa my plea. There we go. He looks so happy. He captured his eyes perfectly. Thanks. Trick is, gotta add the twinkle. I heard that you were with him when it happened. Couldn't you have done anything? I didn't have a piece on me. The hit was definitely a professional one. Fontaine got plugged before I got a chance to get a good slant at the mugs that did him in. But the policeman said that the hitman had to reload halfway through. <sighs> Speed of space. I swear it happened like that. Look, I'm really sorry this happened to Fontaine. If there's anything I can do to help, please just let me know, okay? Do you really mean that? Why wouldn't I? Because folks drop lines like they drop nickels on a subway. There's no disrespect, man. It's just that they're always telling you things they think you want to hear. Some lug will show you a picture of his kid, and you'll tell him it's cute. But that's not the truth, because most babies are ugly, and they grow up to be ugly people in an ugly world. Not everyone's ugly. Some ain't half bad to look at. Some are drop-dead gorgeous, even. You're cute, but you're wrong. The Janes and Johns worth a look are typically rotten to the core. I know because I've had a rough life. My father was a hophead who spent every waking moment getting snowed up. When the bills added up and the dope peddlers came around looking for their dough, my mother and father met an end that makes Fontaine's here look like wine and roses. And in the weeks following their deaths, everyone always offered me help, but when I really needed it, their hands never left their pockets. That's why I'd really like to know if you mean it when you say you'd help me with anything. I'm as serious as the pharaohs, baby. Good, then this is that anything that I need. I want you to find the men responsible for this. I want them to pay. I want them to suffer until they take their last breath. I want them to regret, with every cell of their being, the wrong committed here today. I want you to kill them. All of them.
The bitch was dark and probably a little screwy upstairs, but I knew where she was coming from. To tell you the truth, I kind of liked her angry. Sparked a fire in her eyes, and when combined with a pair of saucy tomatoes and gams that didn't quit, well, I won't lie, it gave me a stiff Roscoe. When a man's partner is gunned down, it's his duty to play an eye for an eye. Sure, being a private dick has its fair share of risks, but what they did to Fontaine ain't in the rule book. And the way I see it, I got the carte blanche to play the board any way I see fit. Oh, well, then here's some Monopoly money. Nix, I can't take it. Sir, that's a lot of cabbage, and a man's got to eat something other than cabbage from time to time, but I can't profit off my partner's troubles. Well, I thought you were a gentleman. Says I ain't. A gentleman would never refuse the heartfelt offer of a lady. Well, when you put it like that... You may want to lay low for a while. I'm going to ruffle a few feathers, and if it gets rough, you may find yourself bunking with Fontaine here. Well, then that's my cue. Will the gentleman show the lady to the door? I can't stand up. I have an erection. Please tell me, little girl. Pray tell me what you got on your mind. You're cute. I'll be in touch. Are you acting so sweet lately? Just because it's getting near Christmas time. You could build a hotel on Marvin Gardens with a roll like that. Ah, oh, excuse our manners. Uh, I'm Detective O'Brien, and this is my partner, Detective O'Brien. Uh, homicide Division. O'Brien and O'Brien, huh? That's cute. You play like frickin' frack and put on ice follies, too? Hey, watch your mouth, tough guy. Firing off repartee that, uh... Snappy and you could be hurt worse than your partner is. Yeah? Well, you boys are tooting the wrong ringer. Fontaine may have 17 noggin slugs to his name, but the doc says he ain't gonna pull interest. That just shows how savvy you are, Mr. Hotshot Detective. Mr. Fontaine de la Fontaine was pronounced dead over an hour ago. Oh, he's taking a dirt nap. The deep six. A stiff. He's bought the farm. He's taking a big sleep. He's kicked the bucket. I think he gets the point there, Carmine. Uh... So, uh, boy wonder, uh, didn't the toe tag on your partner, like, tip you off? I'm in the morgue? I'll say you are. And the three of you are making enough noise out here to raise the dead. Did you do this? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I didn't... Give me that. I hope that twist gave you a get out of jail car with that roll of filthy lucre, because guess where you're going? To jail. To jail. There. <laughs> That's better. The holly green, the ivy green, the prettiest picture you've ever seen is Christmas in Killarney with all of the folks at home. It's nice to know to kiss your bow while cuddling under the mistletoe. And Santa Claus, you know, of course, is one of the boys from home. The door is always open, the neighbors pay a call, and Father John, before he's gone, will bless the house and all. How grand it feels to kick your heels and join in the fun of the jigs and reels. I'm handing you no blarney, the likes you've never known. is Christmas in Killarney with all of the folks at home. I'm telling you, Lugs, one last time, you're barking up the wrong tree. I don't know anything else about Fontaine's death. Oh uh, yeah, and that King Cole didn't know anything about the Lindbergh baby either, but that didn't stop him from turning tricks down a Hollywood vine. Hey Ollie, whatever happened to that Lindbergh baby anyway? He died, Carmine. Someone bashed his skull in. Oh. <sighs> can I go now? A pig's eye, Madison. You can go when I finish festooning this room with all your lies, and we get down to the inner crunchy nougat layer of your straight dope, the straight dope! You know your brother's a real live wire. Where'd you score him? Oh, he's no brother of mine. Carmine's right. Our surnames are not the same. I spell mine with a seven. Really? Yeah, really. B-R-I-7-A-N. Seven silent. 
Is that Egyptian? No, I'm Mesopotamian. And I'm the Queen of France if you think I'm going to buy that cock and bull story about you not having anything to do with your partner's murder. So why don't you stop spinning in my macaroni and calling it ham? And when this interrogation is over, oh, I'll have more than your confession, but I'm going to have your soul! Hello, Chief Murphy. Top of the morning, boys. Uh, top of the morning, top of the morning. Top of the morning, boys. Uh, no, top of the morning, top of the morning. Uh, anyway, I hate to bug you guys, because I know you're busy, but oh, uh, never mind. Okay, Mr. Madison, what my partner is trying to say is he needs you to... Faith and Begora, I remember, they found that killer. What killer? Blarney, the lad that murdered his partner about a half hour ago. What, you couldn't have let us know earlier? Well, I hated to interrupt. It looked like they were having so much fun. I'm sorry. Here, have a potato. Come on, let's go pour Guinness on the Blarney Stone. Cops. I hate cops. They live their lives in the walls and crawl spaces, trying to lock their ears and peepers on a solid meal ticket you bought and paid for, like the rats that they are. And when those filthy rodents come hat in hand, but with Tommy guns and accusations blazing, it barely stops the white St. Patrick's the Snake, are you coming? That four-leaf clover ain't getting any warmer. Damn, I lost it. Madison, meet Silas Akron, local scab. Is that the mulligan that did in your pot of gold? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's him all right. All right, Silas, that positive ID has got you a one-way ticket to the hot seat unless you start talking. Man, don't go shaking my monkey tree coppers. I'm pleading the fifth until I get my phone call. Oh, you want a phone call? Bring, bring, Salas Akron, who shall I say is calling? Oh, guess what, Salas? It's your mouthpiece! <laughs> Operator, there's been a disconnection. Connect me with Pennsylvania 65000. Hey, I love that song. Okay, okay, okay. It was Mr. Bing. He paid me to fix Fontaine good. Who's this Mr. Bing he mentioned? Disregard him. Uh, Mr. Biggs, the local uh, boogeyman. You know, rumor has it he runs all the vice in this city, everything from uh, the rackets to murder. But no one's ever seen the luck. And, and in spite of all of our investigation, we've got no evidence of him. Odds are he's lying. Yeah, but you know, most good leads begin with lies. Just take a look at Gandhi. Possibly, but, but unlikely. Don't worry, Carmine's gonna get the truth out of him. Yeah. <laughs> Keep beating the prisoner like that? Hey, don't spoil it, Fun. It's his birthday. I'm having the time of my life. 23 Skadoo! <laughs> Leprechaun! <clears throat> Alright. You two play Jack Dempsey. I'm gonna go work the Mr. Big angle. Hey, fine. But don't come crying back here when you bust a nut down in Tin Pan Alley with that sorry tune. May the luck of the Irish be with you. Nothing turns my stomach like the sight of power gone mad. Dead partner or not, watching those flatfoots tussle that hood got my rocks off about as much as seeing a preschooler torture a chinchilla with a candy cane. Trouble was, I left before I had much to roll on. Just a name, Mr. Big. 
Thankfully, life threw me a curveball, and Dame Fate took a steaming dump of good luck on my head in the shape of squirrely coincidence. Oh, that a gotcha. Excuse me, sir. Are you Mr. Madison? Depends on who's giving me a jingle in the year 2000. The name is Boomerang Sunday, but people call me Skip. I'm all right from the Chicago Press. If you don't mind, I'd like to bend your ear for a tick about the murder of Fontaine de La Fontaine. Nix. That's a story I'm still in the process of working on. Ring me when I hit the epilogue, and we'll have the uh, How Strikes How Straight chat over Java and a cup of joe. Tit for tat, Shannon. Tit for tat. Maybe I can help you. Skip a couple of chapters and get to the big finish by supper time. The one I'm working on ain't no Madame Defarge, Boomerang. His name's Big. Mr. Big. Normally I'd say he sounds like a rogue out of a Dick Tracy comic, but it just so happens that my gal down at the office has a huge file on Mr. Big. Are you pulling my leg right now? <laughs> they don't call me honest Pete for nothing. I thought you said your name was Skip. Hmm, ah. Big names and trains say just like candy. Oh, Mr. Big, there's a dandy. Come down to my office for all the dirt you could ever need on Mr. Big's organization. Why are we going back to my hotel room? Why not, Shadow Madison? It just so happens that this is the office that me and my crack journalism team call Loire Front. This, this is your crack team of reporters. How rude! Oh, that's all right, Chipmunk Dina. Oh, my friend Mr. Madison didn't mean to offend you. He just doubts the power of the press. <gasps> Not the power of the press. <laughs> did you hear that, Harold? I did, Mr. Snail. Mr. Madison, I don't think you realize how much journalists <laughs> do for this city. People depend on us to report what's going on in the world. Extra, 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 did you see the big headlines today? Extra, 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 check what the press is hot to sell. Extra, 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 the papers tell us about the world. Extra, 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 pay a dime to learn what has unfurled. Ever since the Great Depression, we've been helping lazy slob to advertise in new careers could get those bums, cushy jobs. You rather shot yourself and now you feel like you're gonna cry. Blow your nose, wipe your tears, and give our comics a good try. <laughs> Marmaduke's so funny, you know why? Because the dog's so goddamn big. That's why you gotta feed them to make them learn. Stop, Daddy! The belt hurts! Why is there so much pain? Breaking news! Local journalist flips his lid and you are there. Deadline December. Writing Republicans reach radical right wing reconciliation. Readjusting rusty rules. Restricting ratified regulations regarding Republican. <laughs> <laughs> extra, 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 extra. The headlines never, ever bore. Extra, extra, extra. The Republican culture mama whore. La, 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 la. La 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 Joe Montana's the best investigative reporter on town. And the best hand jobs. I've met some screwy noodle numbers in my day, but that dude came with his own area code. But his file on Mr. Big conveniently handed me a mouthful of leads on a silver platter. Logic dictates it ain't Thanksgiving, so don't trust a free meal. The mashed potatoes might taste tasty, but it's not until you've got a belly full that you realize that the gravy was made from scratch out of deception and the butter leaves the linger of suspicion on your palate. 
Trouble is, I was starving and I had to eat, so I bit. First hood on my list was a willowy dandy who ran the city's protection racket. Jimmy Knowles, known as Jimmy the Nance to his associates, ran his operation out of a dive on the west end of town. Slow your heels, Jesse Owens. Yeah, what's your hurry? You got business with Jimmy? Yeah, I need to speak with him. Hey, Jimmy! You know this wise guy? All right, Pixie, it's time to go. You can either go through the door or through the wall. It's your choice. It concerns Mr. Big! Klaus, Cloud, please allow Mr. Name Shannon Madison. Mr. Madison to join me. Forgive the crude manners of the Ink Brothers. Such retrobates, while scarcely affable, are a necessary evil of this environment. Prepare for a quenching quaff of scotch, aged 18 years. Legal. No thanks. I keep my veins as clean as I keep the streets. Ooh, a police officer, are we? No. Private detective. Mmm. And pray tell, Mr. Madison, just what is your fix? Being the law-abiding teetotaler and all. Carnal pleasures, perhaps? Justice. That's why I'm here. See, my partner was bumped off this morning, and the legal beagles downtown think they found their bone. A deuce by the name of Akron. Bully for them. I hope you gave them a gold star. No. They're happy to have Akron, but to me, he's a minnow. I want the whale that ordered the hit, and the eight ball says all signs point to Mr. Big. You're one of his flunkies, so I don't think it's too far-fetched to assume that you can put me in touch with him, so me and him can work us out like old pals. You savvy? Heard of the gent. You wouldn't be trying to pull the wool over my eyes now, would you, Jimmy? Nope. Okay. Sorry to bother you. Jimmy, you tell Laurel and Hardy here to move out of the way? I'm afraid I can't. If every cat who wandered in off the street clawed at my leg and I didn't say boo about it, who would respect me? Answer, nobody. Ergo, the Ink Brothers will rough you up a bit before throwing you to the street. Standard protocol, really. Looks like you're behind the eight ball now. Jimmy the Nance proved to be my first dead end. But it wasn't a dead end in the sense of the type of dead end you run into a labyrinth. Though I was starting to feel like a guinea pig in a maze. It was more like a cul-de-sac, but even though a cul-de-sac is a paved dead end, I still had other options at my fingertips. So I went to the next name on the file on Mr. Big, Dicky Bananas. Dicky operated the city's prostitution racket for Mr. Big from the outskirts of town in a brothel that looked like the picture of any town, USA. Only this any town had a whore for a mayor, a whore for a milkman, and a whore for a librarian.
Mr. Tall, Dark, and... Um, I'm sorry. I don't seem to recognize your face. That's a sharp observation. I've never been here before. Then allow me to introduce myself. I am Madame Licencia Le Grief, and these are my girls. Ladies! Allow me to introduce them. This is Mary, Maribel, Meredith, Marion, Marianne, and La Latrine, Latrine. Here's Latrine. Isn't she a sad thing? Poor thing, she's so lonely. Both her parents died on the same day, September 11th. 1946. Her father died of cervical cancer and her mother in a mine collapse just 20 minutes later. Would you like to take her upstairs to the orgy room? There's a whole bowl of ginger snap flavored condoms just going to waste. Not interested. Well, if that doesn't interest you, perhaps you'd be interested in strip Russian roulette. Every time you don't kill yourself, you have to take off another piece of clothing. Oh, you gotta take off a piece of clothing. Our policy is that if the girl loses, the gentleman may use the empty bullet hole for an extra $5. Nix, I'm not here looking for female company. Well, there is Roberta. She's pre-op, but... Hey. <laughs> no, you dizzy dame. I'm after a man. Oh, why didn't you say so? Memphis, could you accommodate this gentleman? Sorry, Miss Lucentia, but sweet Memphis sweets. Fingers only took the average. They don't make it poor. Listen to me. I'm looking for Dickie. I know. But we just asked Memphis, and he said no! 86 the double entendres, Laqueef. I'm here for your boss, Dickie Bananas. Oh, why didn't you say so, you silly, aloof man? Just pitter-patter on upstairs. He should be up there, second door on the left. He's been up there, oh, seven minutes by now. I think he should be nearly done. about punching a dame during a miscarriage is? Free lube! <laughs> uh, what the fuck are you looking at? You diggy bananas? Yeah, what do you think? Are you Jeebies, man? It's about time. Bring that freak over an hour ago. Get your ass in here. Whoa! Watch your seat there, Bobo. Yeah, he's my only child. He's gonna grow up one day and be big and strong, just like his old man. Mm hmm. Oh, God damn it. Hey, Bean Crosby, you're gonna fork over my shit or do I need to start breaking some fingers? Calm down, Dickie. If you're looking for powder, I'm bone dry, okay? Is that so? Maybe you ought to explain to me why I shouldn't blow a hole in your fucking brain and make the stain a whole lot bigger. I'm looking for huh? Mr. Big and I need you to point me in the right direction. Oh, well, I must be hearing things. You come in here empty-handed and you expect a favor from me? I don't blow a hole in your head and let one of my flunkies come down here and stick his dick in it for a two-dollar bill. You'd probably like that, wouldn't you, you fruit fly? Maybe I ought to give Jimmy the Nancy jingle and have him tiptoe his ass down here and pump you full of... God, God damn it! How did that shitty fairy ever get his own racket? Huh? You tell me that. I don't know. If I had my own racket, man, I'd be dick deep in dough. 
That motherfucker's too soft. Is that Bazooka Joe? Yeah. Cool. I had to get the afterbirth taste out of my mouth, so I figured I'd do this to get rid of the taste. What's the comic? What's the comic say? Um, something about J. Edgar Hoover? Why? It's number 56. There's only 100 of those in circulation. I need it for my collection. You collect these? No, I just slather them with my semen and stick them on the wall because I like the smell. Yeah, I fucking collect them. And I need that one for my collection. Alright, you want it, it's yours. I got no use for it. Man, you don't understand. I need that. Fine. Here, take it. I got no use for it. No, you don't understand. I need that comic. I need it for my collection. So how's about you give it to me? And I put your choo-choo on the tracks with the information you want, huh? I said you could have it. I don't even want it. Fuck it. You want me to talk? I'll talk. Alright? But get something straight. You want to see Mr. Big? You're fucking crazier than I am. He's like the Wizard of Oz. He's even got one of those fucking... Nobody talks to him, not no way, not no how short motherfuckers on his payroll. And second, you can't go to him straight. It doesn't work like that. He comes to you. Shit, you're gonna have high tea with the Queen of England before you can shake dicks with that cocksucker. I need a name, Dicky. Give me that comic. I'll spill. I keep telling you, you can have it. I don't even want it. Fuck, man, look. All right. Bernie McCubbins, or Bylaw Shin. All right, that's all I know. They're closer to big than me. Who are they? <sighs> Bernie runs the child porn ring down at television studios downtown. And Bye runs Mr. Big's slave trading operation or some shit, I don't know. Where are they now? I don't look like a goddamn social secretary. Just give me the fucking thing. Oh my, jeez. <laughs> Did you read it? Hey, come on, it's it's got Hoover. He's wearing Eleanor Roosevelt's panties. It's fucking funny. How are you not laughing at this? I never really found Bazooka Joe to be all that funny. <laughs> known you like the rough and tumble, I would have smacked you a half dozen times back at the hospital room and saved myself a few C-notes. I didn't go to play patty cake. I was there to grill a suspect and he turned the broiler on high before I had a chance to react. I thought those looked like the tears of a clown rolling down your nose. Tell me, Mr. Madison, have you got what it takes to see this case through, or have I just turned the spotlight on a child with a cap gun who thinks he's playing Wyatt Earp? You got it all wrong, kitten. He's in clown tears. It's war paint. And I'm killing my way up the totem pole of the top chief. See, I got a line on a pigeon who commissioned the hit on Fontaine, mob boss by the name of Mr. Big. I've been muscling in on his organization, so it's only natural they fight back. All I can say is, if you'd seen the trail of mangled, bloody remains I've left behind in my wake, you'd change your tune. There you go again, Wyatt Earp. Question is, are you playing for keeps? Like Genghis Khan on Angel Dust, baby. If that's the case, then watch your shadow. They didn't call it the shootout at the OK Corral because everything turned out all right. No worries. I may enter hat in hand, but I'll exit like Doc Holliday. Guns blazing. Be careful with your metaphors. He had tuberculosis. Who says I ain't contagious? Good thing I got my booster shot. I didn't say there was a cure, honey. Look, kid, you're cute, but I've lost too many people I love to back alleys. I just can't stand to do it again. If you're gonna ruffle the syndicate's feathers, 
The Syndicate's not just gonna lie down and take it. That's a risk I'm gonna have to take. Sure, when you play in the streets, it's part of the game. And I know that. Just don't ask me to like it. I'll be in touch. The dame was right. I was soft. If I was ever going to get to the bottom of Fontaine's death, I'd have to stop playing nice. I'd roll tougher with the two names Dickie dropped, starting with Kitty Poor and Arthur or Bernie McCubbins. Dickie might not have been McCubbin's secretary, but luckily, McCubbin's real social secretary talked just as much. Too bad his current location didn't do me any good. An odd duck of a mourner at Mr. Child Porn's gravesite filled in the gaps in my story. It seems that McCubbins hightailed it to his wild birthday soiree in Little Hollywood the week prior and left a few hours later with a toe tag. Another dead end. The next trick in today's show will be tracking down Bai Lao Shen, but I didn't have a hunch as to where she could be. But that's when the queer bird went off on a yarn about a mug named James Hong in a flit called Chinatown, and then it hit me. Chinatown! Things turned sour quick with Lao Shen. At first I assumed that taking it rough from the start had put my worst foot forward, but I have a hunch that the language barrier was what had really worked against me. Listen here, you yellow slit. You better tell me all you know about Mr. Big Chop Suey quick or Confucius say I will fuck your world over. Okay, maybe I did cross a line. Sucks to be you. Yeah, I got that one too. Listen, your translations aren't helping. Look, I came in heavier than I should have, and I'm sorry. I'm not here to bust you or ruin your business. I just need a line on Mr. Big. Jesus. This detective work is hard. You Mr. Big? Weaver。对。可是,Dad,我不会帮他,他输不定会。傻了,这个出货。没错,Dad会把他解决掉,他就不会再来找我们的麻烦了。这样,拆了他也不会被卷进来。兔子不吃。我变唱。没错,尤其拆那套是我的地盘。Yo! English, please? 带他去见黑鼻鸡鼻子. This is your lucky day. The madam has decided to be most gracious. You'll go to 2046 Scurvy Heights on Phil Street. You'll meet a pusher there by the name of Hebe Jeebies. You will wait there with him for Mr. Big. We will arrange the meeting. Really? That's the best break I've received all week, but... Wait a minute. Why can't you just have Mr. Big come down here himself? Apologize again about earlier. Sorry about that. <laughs> 
，值班是十三个小时，你能做的事情只能是流血、流泪和尖叫，最后还给你剩一口气儿，让你眼睁睁看着自己的心被挖出来。The madam says, "Good luck." Are you sure that's all she said? Get out. Mr. Armstrong, I have to admit, you have one hell of a record collection. Anybody who's got Mitch Miller in their collection is a man who's all right by me. That's impressive. You know, there's something about his stylings that I've always found, I don't know, wholesome in their soothing nature. In fact, it's so good at soothing my inner beast that I've actually got my Christmas spirit going. And since it's got my holiday spirit going, we've decided we're not going to rape your wife after all as is customary to our habits. Call it my Christmas gift to you. However, you will tell me where your son is. You're not gonna have too much of a record collection left. <coughs> Mr. Armstrong, my beef is not with you, it's with your son. He's the one who skedaddles a lot of my employer's money. Now, you tell me where your son is, and I swear, my mother's grave, that no harm will come to him. I've only been sent after the money. So, the question I have for you, Mr. Armstrong, is can you help me? I'm sorry. I haven't seen RG for two weeks. I swear to... Don't apologize to me, Mr. Armstrong. Save your sorries for the Gospelites. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna talk. I'm telling you right now, we went RG. <laughs> Boss, I just got a message for you. You want me? I'm here, you bastard! I'm sorry, Knuckles, for we were so cruelly interrupted. What were you saying? That I, I just got a call from Fu Candy. And what does our fine friend in Chinatown have to say? He says that some stooge is snooping around, asking questions about Mr. Big. Hmm. Bai Lao shouldn't even arrange the meetup. Well then, you want to keep our gentleman caller waiting? Now do we? You go tell Spad to bring the car around. Take Mitch Miller with us. Pay dirt. What a laugh it would have been If Daddy had only seen Mommy kissing Santa Claus Last night Shangri-La, man, have a seat. Thanks. So it brings you to 2046. 2046, that's in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for heebie-jeebies. Either one of you him? No, man, man. He'll be back in a minute. I'm EB, and this is Shuri. EB. Yeah, yeah, it stands for 8-Ball. But it doesn't have anything to do with drugs, man. No, 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 it's biblical, like... Mark, or Isaiah, Cody. I'm totally asked to do with drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, they call him Shooter because he likes to smoke weed. Oh, shit, here he is. Hey, you, someone's looking for you. Holy shit, man, you brought us dinner. Thanks, man, put these on my tab. Yeah, I mean, uh, no, are, are, are those real? Almost assuredly. 
They're my little helpers. They come quite in handy when a junkie needs to be scared out of the money he owes me. Hmm. Please, uh, tell me these don't bite. They're positively harmless. On the other hand, though, this fellow is not. <laughs> can you make him a detective? Oh, yes. I can make him anything your little heart desires. Baby, I want to thank you for your hospitality. You give my boys and I a few minutes, Mr. Inquisitive here. We barely here faster than you could say boo. Well, formal introductions first. Name's Phineas Weaver, the most folks call me Dead Eye. And you are Mr. Mr. Shannon Madison. According to your driver's permit? I don't know how to drive yet. Huh. Detective who can't operate a motor vehicle. What do you think of that, Spazzy? Cute as a dumpster full of kittens, boss. I hear that. I thought Mr. Big was going to be the one to come see me. Well, Mr. Big doesn't like public appearances. If he went out in public, no bulls be on him like flies on honey. No, sir. Most of us know Big only by his orders. Very few have ever seen him in the organization, myself included. If you've never seen him, how do you know he exists? i never seen the devil either, but I know all too well he exists. I've seen him at work in this city too often. And if acts of evil are any kind of indication of power, then old Mr. Big could sure give the ruler of Hades a run for his money. So, next time you doubt Mr. Big exists, why don't you mosey on down to Skid Row with the city morgue? Tell all the stiffs and bums of this town that they got put there by a figment of somebody's imagination. See how far that gets you. Is there anybody alive who's laid their peepers on him? Well, as a matter of fact, old Mr. Huge happens to be his right-hand man is quite familiar with the gent. And it just so happens that Mr. Huge is who I have been ordered to take you to. Nix, you tell Huge I want to go to Big Direct. I'm through playing games. Listen, I don't think you realize I'm not the type to negotiate with. Typically, my coming at the picture means that you're going out, and there are literally dozens of sons of bitches at the bottom of Lake Michigan who can test just that. If they can still talk, that is. In fact, up until a few minutes ago, my only inclination in this world was to come in here and to put a bullet in that pea brain of yours. But once I contacted old Huge, story changed. Now he wants a rendezvous, and that's a rare thing indeed. So, before you get my anger on, I suggest you shut your fucking mouth and count yourself damn lucky to make this far. All right, jeez, I struck a nerve. Can we just split now? Now, hold on. We can't go rushing off to Mr. Huge's all willy-nilly. Huge likes his privacy. We gotta get you there secret-like. There's one or two ways we can go about it, which I like to call the easy way or the hard way. Now, what'll it be? The easy way? <laughs> you heard him, boys. Easy way it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, before you run out of air, let me just assure you that this is the easy way. It was a hard way. You'd still suffocate. But once you were out, Reed raped the shit out of you. But I'm horny now. Can we stop at the art museum on the way? No, you'll just beat off to the Impressionist paintings again. Oh, now, now, now. I think we can make a little side trip. After all, here's your birthday. Will he really forget? I can make him forget his own birthday if I wish.
Well, I can't deny the name fits you. I shudder to think how big Mr. Big is. Why are you talking to me? You're Mr. Huge, aren't you? Do I look like Mr. Huge? Is that a serious question? Don't answer that. I'm the one you're looking for. I'm... I'm Mr. Huge. Really? That's a funny name for someone who's knee-high to a circus midget. <laughs> Munchkin. Yeah, boss. Shorter. Shorter. <laughs> Not so tall now, are you, wise guy? <sighs> Why are you here? I'm looking for Mr. Big. Dead I told me that much. Why are you here? No bullshit! My partner was killed, and to be honest, I'm getting a little sick of repeating myself. Hit him again! Don't test my patience. I'm not a forgiving man! Did I can attest to that all too well. Now, I'm gonna ask you one more time. What's your business with me? I'm not after you, I'm just after your boss. Golem? What do you say? He's telling the truth. All right. This is the way it is. You want to see Mr. Big? Well, tough shit! Your partner's dead. Blow your nose and get yourself a set of balls. You want to play detective? Well, then find a Dakota ring and stay home with the kids. Deadeye's gonna take you back where he found you. You want me to leave him alive? Get us, Stubborn! Now, you're gonna go back to rescuing kittens from trees for little old ladies, and you're gonna forget all about your petty vendetta, this case, and most importantly, me. Because if I see your face again, I'm gonna make you suffer to a point where you wish you got off as easy as your dead partner! Capiche? But I. No! <laughs> 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 I said, Capiche? Dead eye? Get this faggot out of my sight! <laughs> Nighty night, faggot. That was it. The final dead end. I had nowhere left to go but nowhere, and that's a destination that has no address but the bottom of a whiskey bottle. And I don't drink. If poker is the game of life and the game is Texas Hold'em, then I flopped a trio of faulty leads. The turn was false hope and the river was bitter defeat, leaving me up against a full house with aces and eights. Dead man's hand. I should have known better than to play in the first place when I was in the big blind and the ante was my soul. But I went all in anyway, and when it came time to show what I had, I had pocket nothings. Or so I thought. After all, every game has its wild cards. <sighs> Welcome to the office of Shannon Madison. This is Failure speaking. How may I help you? Yeah, don't, don't call it quits. Yes, kid. What? Uh, Mr. Huge is giving you the runaround because you're involved in something much bigger than the death of your partner. If you want in on the big picture, we need to meet. Who is this? I can't. I'll explain later. Just meet me in the basement of the city aquarium at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. I recommend you play ball, kid. <laughs> You'll spend the winter freezing on your keister. Why should I trust you? It's an alternative to sitting in your hotel room and <laughs> feeling sorry for yourself. Harsh.
Hello? Is there anyone hiding there in the dark? Figured I'd get my gawking in. Oh, did you see anything that stuck your fancy? Well, number called a Technicolor Damselfish made an impression. Technicolor Damselfish? It sounds gorgeous. It was. Its body is a purpley yellow with red, but not the crayon yellow, the other kind of yellow you yeah. find in the crayon box. Yeah, chartreuse. Uh, more like a dirty yellow. Ah, uh, saffron. A little bit less orange. Ah, uh, goldenrod. Goldenrod, goldenrod. That's, right. Rod. that's right. Yeah, that's right. goldenrod fish. That's uh, that's like something to see. It was. You know, it made me feel the way the first time I saw Van Johnson dance on stage. Van Johnson? Yeah. Yeah, Van. Yeah. Okay, kid, let's, let's get down to brass tacks. I understand you're investigating the uh, death of your partner, right? I didn't know about Never the mind. death of Never my mind. partner. I knew that how I knew is not the point of this meeting. To understand how I want to help you, I'm going to tell you a little story. <laughs> A parable, if you will. See, there's this married couple move into their first apartment. <coughs> and one day the uh, husband discovers that the bathroom faucet is leaking, it's dripping, and he can't fix it himself. So, so he calls a plumber. Well, the plumber tries to fix the leak, but the repair doesn't take. And in the end, the plumber's uh, <coughs> sleeping with the wife. Well, now. Husband calls another plumber. Same result. And in the end, the wife fooled her around with a second plumber. Sounds like the wife's a little bit of a war, if you ask Oh, me. exactly. Exactly. But the, see, the guy, doesn't, the guy doesn't understand that. He doesn't realize that because he's too busy focusing on a minor problem. See, the death of your partner is that leaky faucet. Are you trying to say the life of a dead man isn't important? No. Not when the fate of a living man is at stake. I still don't follow. What's the big picture here? The big picture is made up of links that don't connect. The questions you should have been answered but aren't. For starters, why, why are you running a detective operation out of a hotel room? Why is the syndicate given to the runaround instead of, <coughs> instead of killing you? There's a bigger game at play here, a much larger game, and you don't even know you're on the board. Well, I'm here to tell you you are. If what you say is true, why should I believe you? I never said you should, but I know you're desperate, so what do you got to lose? So where do I go from here? Only you can know that. I'm just here to give you a start. <laughs> Great Caesar's Romero, he looks just like me. Except for the sweet mustache, obviously. I tried to throw him, but uh, no dice. Uh, who is he? That's the man who can, who can give you the answers you're looking for. Yeah, but now I have even more questions. Uh, who is he? No, I, a brother, a, a cousin, what? I've said more than I should have already. I just try to remember. Remember. But I...
close your eyes and you will see remember and think of all that life can be remember dream love is only in a dream so remember sack of old potatoes <laughs> covered with mud <laughs> and nursing a sprained ankle. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was the first and last time I ever gave him a riding lesson. <laughs> change for a nickel? Thank you, thank you. Hey, what's the matter, pal? You look like you ain't got a friend in the world. It's worse than that. I don't even remember who I am anymore. That sounds awful, awful. You know, I used to be just like you. Useless and healthy. But, uh, I met a broad that changed all of that. Medium Rhea. Fortune's well done. You think she can help me? Help you? Look what she did for me. Enter, Mr. Madison. The spirit world welcomes you. You know my name? Medium rare sees all. Well, if that's true, then answer me this. What's my sign? Astaroth. I believe you're mistaken. I don't think it's a sign of the Zodiac. Oh no, my young detective. You will find that it is you who is mistaken about a great many things. Everything that has transpired has been according to the spirit's design. These spirits speak to me. Oh, really? Then what do those spirits say about this? He looks just like me, but I don't have any brothers. What is it? What, what did you see? Oh, I must consult the cards. Why does that say death? Perhaps I shuffled them incorrectly. Let's do the bones instead. 
spirit world is clouding my vision. I'd like to try one more time. Give me your palm. Oh, your lifeline is unusual. Look, this is where you are now. You have branched from your past. Before you lie, great challenges, trials of the heart and of the soul. Death will surround you. You will have two choices. One path will lead you to happiness. The second path will be one of sadness, far darker than you can imagine. See, that's the problem. I can't remember my past. I can recall childhood memories, but everything that happened last week, it's just like there's this large hole. Ever since I found the photograph of this man, I don't know who I am anymore. And I think it's got something to do with the case that I'm working on. That's why I came to you. I came to you for answers. Take a deep breath, relax, and answer this question for me. Who are you?
seconds. <laughs> oh! Hey, 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 hey! Bravo, Mr. Madison. Bravo. Quite a dazzling display of swordsmanship. Do you do you take requests? I've always had a penchant for the sleight of hand. <laughs> well, you can see since we're taking the serious road, tell me, Prince Mishka, what can we do for you? Cut the QP act, Nancy boy. I dropped the two little sandbags over there because word one between them stops at word two, but I kept you around for a reason. See, I've always wanted a minor bird. Faggoty little creatures, but they talk a lot, and I tend to like conversation. And if Pretty Polly don't squawk, then I start plucking feathers till he does. You catch my drift? Oh, I follow. But although I have quite the beak, I'm all clam. You proved your point, so bully for you. But both you and I know that I'm a syndicate man. You touch me, and the Chicago mob's gonna rain shit down on your pretty head so hard. Now, if I say spill, you spill. For round one, you sent me off on a wild goose chase, and I'm done with that. Now I want the red line to the top of the food chain. Now you talk! God damn it! Where's Big Jimmy? I don't know. Nobody knows. Big's gone. What do you mean he's gone? I don't know for sure. I only heard... I only heard rumors. Back alley stuff. Some say he got arrested. Others say he took a powder with a few million clams. Split to casino school. I don't buy it. The boss of the Chicago Syndicate doesn't just roll over like that. Neither do I. That's why I think a dirty deed went down. Coup d'etat. And you wouldn't know? It's the upper crust. I'm a player, but not on that level. Then who would? Dicky Bananas. Milo Shin. I wouldn't know. I wasn't involved. I swear. I swear to God. Swear to me! Okay. Then I'm done here. I'm gonna leave you as my calling card, and when Huge sees you, he'll ante up. And if he doesn't, I'm gonna whittle away the days until Christmas, picking off his wise men till he does. You, you think you could take on this syndicate? What are you, nuts? And then he just left. Do you expect me to believe that? Believe it? How can you not? Look at my neck. And you told him nothing more about the organization or Mr. Big beyond what you've just told me. No, no, I swear. I told him that I heard that Big had gone AWOL, but that it was just a rumor. And nothing else? I don't know anything else. Good. Let's keep it that way. What? No! Jimmy was always a little too light in the loafers for my taste. If you're going to run protection, you need to run it on fear. Where's Mr. Inferno? What's someone say? Mr. Inferno? Jimmy the Nance is dead. I shot him in the head. Your protection racket is yours. My own protection racket? Oh my god, this is fantastic! I've always wanted one. Hmm, can I use dynamite? Of course I can! <laughs> burn, baby, burn! You can go now. There'll be a hot, hot man in the old town tonight. 
Well, that ties up one loose end. Yeah, but what about the other loose end? The fury of a detective scorned. Well, the trail will either lead to Bai or Dicky, and that's where it will end. Yeah, but what about Jimmy's tail? He made it sound like the detective's got a couple screws loose in his old noggin. You're telling me you think they can handle him? If not, then what am I paying them for? Hello? What the hell am I paying you for, man? I called for that shit an hour ago. How much did you need? Fuck you, that's how much! Now get your bony ass over here! Rhea's little hypnosis had changed something in me. That much was clear. I'd leveled the Ink Brothers without a moment's thought. Funny thing is, Rhea's work only took halfway. She'd unleashed a rage inside of me, but the memories that should have accompanied it were still missing. All I knew was that the darkness in my heart was banged for blood and it wanted to bleed all over the syndicate blue bloods who wronged me and made my blood boil until the streets ran red with their blood and their blood money. And after I killed them in cold blood, with a rush of blood, I'd wipe the blood from my hands and become one with the darkness. For it is my Valkyrie, my brother, my blood brother. There will be blood. Oh, hello, love. Would you like to bother to keep you warm tonight? Only five quid of buggering. Can it, sister? Oh, Mr. Madison! Mr. Madison! Goddamn time, Hebe. Did you know that a mosquito has 47 teeth? What's going on? Nothing. Back to work, girls. My mom said there'd be things like this. You fuck! I swallowed my gun. <laughs> Tell me about this miserable little coup of yours, Dicky. I don't know shit. <laughs> You say you're clueless, but last time I was here, you sent me out on my ear. Why? Uh, why? Uh, what is the syndicate telling you that you're not telling me? They told me that flat-footed morons like you should try forgetting the dead partners instead of mourning them. Mr. Big, where is he? Nobody knows. He comes straight to us. He must have friends. Have you met this guy? He's fucking insane! You better start talking or else you're not gonna have much of a nose left to snort with. Alright. All right, you want the big secret? Word on the street is, Huge put Big away. Now Mr. Huge is running things now. How do you know? Huge, he came, he came to me two weeks back. He told me I answer direct to him now. It doesn't take a genius to see that Big is out of the picture and you must really be a goddamn moron if you haven't figured out by now that Huge had the hit out on your partner. If that was the case, then why didn't he kill me when he had the chance? Do I look like a midget motherfucker? I don't know. I'm gonna leave now and see if your story flies, and you better pray and hope that it does. <laughs> You'll never leave this house alive.
dead-headed bastard. Unloaded into, but I think they hit their limits. Hey, play me out, sweet Memphis sweets. <laughs> no, 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 no fucking way. Listen, you cunt. I own your ass. I own this town. If you got some flat foot faggot fucking with your business, don't come running to me like a schoolgirl sand in your cunt. You got shit in your ears? No. No? I think you do. I'm not gonna lose Chicago because you got a sawed off dick with no balls. <laughs> not today! This problem needs to go bye bye. Or I swear to Jesus, ball sweat Christ. I'll name my first kid my whore wife shits out after you. You wanna know its name? I'll name it Mongoloid, Chrome Dome, Small Dick, Chode Head, Dead Motherfucker! You got me? I will fuck you in the air with a brick if you lose Chicago. Have you no pride? No sense of duty? No sense of destiny? I'm looking for a general here. And what do I get instead? A foot soldier. I want Shannon Madison dead. Understand? As clear as a virgin's conscience on Sunday, boss. Good. Now, I'm a reasonable man. So I'm going to lend you one of my grand high ass kickers to liquidate this problem you've so royally fucked up. That is, if DeMarcus deems your sorry ass worth saving. A friend in need, Boss Herod. A friend in need. I will kill this detective for you, Mr. Huge, but I must warn you. Your organization will suffer more fatalities at my hand before you can breathe a sigh of relief. I must cut off this predator's food source to starve him, to make him my prey. And when I have done so, I will uh, sniff out his trail, find his den where he sleeps, and tear out his throat with my teeth. With your teeth? Yes, uh, it, it is my way, it is my um, ritual. <laughs> mm. Whatever turns you on, buddy. Is this guy for real? Just banging skinny chicks make the dick look fat? Well, look what the cat dragged in. Hello, it'd be nice. Mm. So I read the funny pages today and saw this splash of red. Am I to assume that means I'm getting my money's worth? Well, it sure as hell ain't little orphan Annie getting a visit from Aunt Flo. I tried being nice and all I got was ring around the rosy. But once I dropped the schoolboy attitude, the syndicate men started flopping like nine pins. Well, at this rate, you'll be making headlines instead of bylines. So now the question is, what dark alley did you walk down? A man can only be pushed so far before he starts to push back. Nothing more to it than that. Oh, there's definitely something to it. Something's changed about you, and it runs a lot deeper than that cookie duster. You noticed. I can tell by the look in your eye, you see it as a touch of Rudolph Valentino. Actually, it makes you look like a pedophile. Well, if that's your thing, then just say those three little words every man wants to hear. I'm not legal. Here goes the schoolboy act again. You're a man of many personas, Mr. Madison, and quite frankly, I don't know which one I trust. Cut the act, doll. Playing innocent doesn't suit you. What's that supposed to mean? 
It means you can't criticize a man for acting on impulse when you order him to. You stood over the body of your dead fiancé and cried for blood. If that's not a sign there's a dark side to you, then I don't know what is. I think that's my exit cue. <clears throat> there it is. I can see it in your eyes. We're on the same page now, you and I. The darkness, baby. Let it out. <laughs> your mustache tickles. Let's find out where else you're ticklish. Now there's a line that's too cheap for a five and dime store. Yeah, but it's working. I can't risk falling in love. You've already spat in the syndicate's face, and they're gonna come after you. Which means you're not safe anymore either. And it doesn't take an Einstein to put one and one together and figure out it was Fontaine's widow that put me on the trail of the syndicate. You may want to move out of your flat, find some place to lay low for a while. Fine, but don't be offended if I pick something a little nicer. No sweat. Here's my number. Call me in an hour and I'll let you know where I'm staying. <sighs> Will do. I may take another visit to Chinatown, see Bai Lao Shin, maybe fill in a few more blanks. Be careful. Half the syndicate down and my getting to second base, I was on a roll, but all lucky streaks have their end. Mine died in Chinatown. I got to Bai Lao Shen and found the slave trader and her translator, Fu Can Du, dead. The way they'd been killed told me it was no gangland rivalry. The pair looked like they'd played nookie with a grizzly. This was the work of a professional. Somebody was trying to throw me off the trail. I didn't stick long. I got the feeling I was being watched. At least I knew one thing now. Evelyn wasn't the one who needed to find a new place to lie low. Evelyn, I need to know where you're staying. I'm still at my apartment on 38th and Grand, room 246. I'll meet you there. The spaghetti's at the fan. I need to bail my place. Are you alright? Fine as frogs, Harris baby, and I intend to stay that way. I'll see you in a couple hours. Christmas Eve. Thanks. So I noticed that Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer is on. Uh, perhaps you'd like to come over to my place and Chipmunk Tina and the gang would love to have you over. Yeah, maybe later. Oh. How's the case going? Uh, did that information I give you provide any assistance to your investigation? Look, Skip, I can't talk right now, okay? I'm busy. Well, maybe after, uh, after Rudolph is over, perhaps uh, Chipmunk Tina and the gang and myself could come over and hang Christmas decorations. And then after that, we could have some eggnog and sing Christmas carols, and Chipmunk Tina could give you a good blowjob. Maybe more later. Yeah, 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 see you, Skip. <sighs> Jesus. <sighs> Jeez, what is it, Skip? I want you to stay quiet. Don't make any fast moves. Sit down on the bed. All right. You're the one that killed Bai Lao Shin, aren't you? She was a necessary expenditure to leave me to you. Well, if you're here to shoot me, then what are you waiting for? Oh, a full moon. When it rises into the night sky, it will release the beast within me, and I will metamorphose into a half-man, half-wolf. During which time I must, um, consume living flesh in order to satiate my appetite for another month. And granted, I ate uh, Bai Lao Shen and her attache last night, but uh, that's the thing about eating Asians. <laughs> it only keeps you from being hungry for... Forget my humor. <laughs> you're telling me that you're a werewolf. Please, don't be so crude. Lycanthrope, the proper term is lycanthrope. You really expect me to believe that? No. 
<laughs> no, no one ever does, but um, you will believe, Mr. Madison. You will believe. Four minutes, and then party time. I guess you're not going to need your gun if you're not going to shoot me. Can't scare me, Mr. Madison. I can only be killed by silver, and there are no silver bullets in that gun, so logically speaking, shooting me won't get you anywhere. I'm sure you're absolutely right. It's been real, but, uh, I gotta take a leak. Shakespeare, who once wrote, Tickle us, do we not laugh? Prick us, do we not bleed? Wrong us, do we not revenge? And the time for revenge is at hand, Mr. Madison. And I'm so glad you could join us here at your girlfriend's apartment building while she's gallivanting about town. She's not my girlfriend. Be that as it may, it doesn't matter whether you're her loving husband. When she comes home, Find you dead. There's no choosing between the easy way or the hard way anymore. It's all gonna be the hard way. But look at it this way. Wasn't this the way that you wanted it to be? You and me, warrior to warrior. I guess you could say we see eyes to eye on that. You have a singular wit, detective. Knuckles. <laughs> you think that hurts? Try jacking off at these things. Get up and go to the table. Now, it might be easier to plug you right here and now. I want to wrap this whole mess up nice and neat by Christmas morning, which at this point is about an hour away. So that's why you're going to commit suicide. Pick up the pen and start taking dictation. Dear Evelyn, I ain't playing your game. Now listen here, smart ass. I'm gonna give you a choice after all. One or two ways we can do this. Option one, your girlfriend comes home and finds you dead. She sheds a few tears, boo-hoo, she moves on, and in two weeks, she's screwing another fella. Option two, and I rather like this one, she still comes home, and she still finds you dead. But the big difference this time is, we're still here. From there, we beat the shit out of her. 
We rape her, we kill her, and just for fun, we make it look like you did it. Now, I rather like option two, don't you, boys? And what's Christmas without rape? I even brought my raping music. See, there you are. But, in the holiday spirit, I thought I'd leave your girl out of the equation. What a generous man you are. Dear Emma, I am alone. Wait, wait, wait. Make that. I am utterly alone. I am too overcome with grief from all my senseless killings. I am so sorry that I failed you. While you might be overcome with sorrow to walk in and see my demise, let me just assure you that I am and always shall be your friend. You nearly have a way with words, boss. Thank you, Spazzy. Now, Mr. Madison, if you can go ahead and wrap up that suicide note nice and clean, I'd like to be done with this whole affair. Ten. Ten. Nine. Two, you dirty dog! Now that option one and option two are out of the way, let's move on to option three. You sit here and rest a spell while I tidy up my mess. I leave Evelyn a note so she doesn't wonder why there are two rats sitting there dead in her bathtub. And you take me to Mr. Hughes so we can settle this once and for all, so that way I don't spend Christmas looking over my shoulder. <laughs> you don't actually expect me to talk, do you? No. Not right away. I was starting to wonder when Dead Eye would be returning. Uh, boss, you're not gonna believe this, but it's Dead Eye. You gotta be kidding me. I don't believe this. Mr. Huge, I can explain. It's okay, Deadeye. You don't need to apologize. Really? Really. Stay right where you're at. Munchkin, go have a little fun at Mr. Madison's expense. Pleasure. Okay, that's enough. Impressive move, Mr. Madison, but my gun's not empty. What do you say to that? I say, Timber! Ah! Now that the odds are in my favor, I guess I'll get around to asking you some more questions, huh? I ain't saying jack shit. <clears throat> Wrong answer. I know about your little coon about how you took over the city from Mr. Big. If you played nice during round one, you never would have seen me again and I'd have been on my way. Now's your chance to correct that mistake. What'd you do with Mr. Big? Name doesn't oh. ring a bell. <laughs> I can do this all day, you know. Shit, I'll even give you a transfusion, that way I can keep beating you within an inch of your life. Now, if you don't tell me where Mr. Big is, I swear to God I'll make the rest of your life a living hell. <laughs> you think my threats are funny? <laughs> no, <laughs> that ain't funny. But there's something that's very funny. 
goddamn hilarious. Mr. Big is still alive. <laughs> That's not the punchline. The gag is, you saw him earlier today. Where? In the mirror. <laughs> Jesus, you're surprised. You don't remember, do you? You're lying. I am? Do you think they give private dicks offices and hotel rooms, and then they act like lunatics when their luck is down? No, that's what hoods do, and you're the craziest one of them all. In fact, too nutty to inherit the syndicate that his dead daddy will to him. That's why we paid some stooge to hypnotize you, to make you forget who you were. Who's we? Me, Carlotta Ambrose, Cajun Tom, and your concierge, Vernon Trembling. That story doesn't jive. Why not just bump me off instead? Why go through all the trouble of making a fake identity for me? Carlotta didn't want you dead. She promised me half the money once the syndicate was in our hands and you were left alive. Now, ask me if I know why. Why? That was a rhetorical question. If this is true, where are the others? Carlotta and Tommy were in charge of setting up your fake life. And then they split town as soon as they got the money and the deal was solid. As for Vernon, <laughs> Don't play dumb. I got word an hour ago he was dead. It was just a matter of time. <laughs> that wasn't me. And I guess you didn't commission the hit on your partner Fontaine either. Why would I? Because <laughs> you're a loon. You're a psychopath. You're a cold-blooded killer. <laughs> but I still don't remember anything. You took my life away! <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who you are! <laughs> you don't know who you are! this? Miscuzi, Miscuzi, you ask me sketch bodies? I'm a little artistic interpretation, no? But it, just spare me the Nancy boy malarkey and draw the stiff. Hey, did you finish it yet? Ooh. Carmine! This is the sloppiest 48 hours I've seen in all my years on the force. What about you, Carmine? Well, I can think of better ways to spend Christmas Eve, I can tell you that. So, uh, what do you make of all this? Mob well, warfare? Well, I have a theory, but it's a long shot. Yeah, uh, shoot. Well, these four were homosexuals. You know, Nancy boys. And something went wrong with their sex-love quadrangle parallelgram thingy. And before you know it, they had a lover's quarrel, and they all ended up killing each other. Yeah, I, I see. And, and just what led you to that sound deduction? Detective work, my good man. I have a solid clue right here. Look what I found in Hughes' wallet. It's, it's just a picture of a dog. His dog? Well, how does that confirm your theory that this man's a, a, a homosexual? Look, I'm sure you're familiar with that old observation that owners after a while start to resemble their pets. Yeah. Well, this dog looks like a faggot.
not sure why I'm here, because I don't even know what to believe anymore. I don't even know who I am. I don't want to be a ruthless killer, but I can't go back to my life as a detective knowing what I know now. Oh, please God, if you're up there, give me some sort of a sign as to who I should be. Please help me find who I am. Thank God you're all right. I thought you'd been 86. I'm like a cockroach. It's up to kill. I got your note. What happened with Mr. Huge? Is everything taken care of? Situation's been resolved. Permanently. Oh, you? You really did it. I can hardly believe it. I may just say those three words to you. Yeah? Well, that's great because I got three words for you, too. Yogi the Fantastic. What? Yogi the Fantastic. I don't follow. Cut the crap, Carlotta. I remember everything. I remember your affair with Cage and Tommy. Yeah, and about how the two of you tag team with Vernon and Mr. Huge to make me forget who I was. Only thing I don't understand is this. Why did you play the victim angle? Did you get some sort of sick thrill watching me behave like a bird trapped in a broom closet? No, I wanted to stay by your side to get you to remember who you really are. I wanted to break Yogi's spell so that we could be together again. I couldn't fight them. They, they, they made me do it. You're still playing me for a sucker. I'm Mr. Big now, remember? Not wishy-washy Shannon Madison. So save me those crocodile tears, okay? You wanted me out of the way just as much as everyone else so you could keep your affair with Cajun Tommy going. It's too bad you didn't hypnotize me before I got a chance to commission a hit on him. He knew the risk he was taking with you when he started seeing me. The reason for the affair was pretty simple. I needed a fella who was a little less psychopath and a little more... Psychopath is right. Now you better start filling in the gaps before I snap that little neck of yours. You're hurting me. I know. You let me take my fair share of licks during your little game, I figure it's time to return the favor, just like I did with Deadeye, Huge, and the rest of the syndicate. That's it, isn't it? That's the connection. You hired me to wipe everybody out and make room for you so you can move in on the syndicate. Oh, you're wrong. Kill them. Kill all of them. Those were your exact words, weren't they? I've rubbed out every obstacle in your way to controlling the Syndicate. Silas killed Cage and Tommy. That just leaves Vernon. And Huge told me a funny thing before I beat his skull in. Vernon was found dead last night. Said that I did it. But I sure as hell didn't do it. I killed Vernon last night. After I paid him to jar your memory with a photo of yourself, he was no longer any use to me. A good thing, too, because I avoided Deadeye and the rest of his crew. 
So you admit you've been manipulating me from the very start. Yeah, I paid Huge not to kill you. I put you on the trail. I sent Vernon to you. I even paid a crazy street puppeteer to play a reporter and feed you information on all the members I wanted destroyed. I did it all, you dumb shit. That has to be the most convoluted scheme I've ever heard before in my life. Yeah, and it worked. And now the city is ours. If you expect me to roll over in that line, you're nuttier than a rummy in a month full of Sundays. So I guess this is goodbye. I guess so. sick of being a monster. You unlocked my memories for me, Yogi. You showed me what I really was and it sickened me. Those brief few days I had, unmarred by anger, hatred, and despair were some of the happiest days I've ever had. A wise man once said, ignorance is bliss. And I want that bliss. Because if I stay the rest of my days living as Mr. Big, I'll be looking over my shoulder. This time, I came that close to meeting my end. I don't want to deal with that anymore. I'd rather spend my days as Shannon Madison, broken, penniless, and happy. Just listen to the sound of my voice. It is the only sound in all the universe, and it controls all. When my voice orders you to do so, you will sleep. This city, there's no end to her cruelty. I patrol her streets and she thanks me by killing my partner. I remain steadfast and she kills the only girl who cared about me in this stinking town. Evelyn, who was it that killed you? Whoever it is, I will find him. But it seems the more I struggle to understand what has happened, the less I know. I don't know who killed Evelyn. I still don't know who killed my partner. I don't know if the Syndicate is still on my trail, where my next lead is coming from, or even the last time I ate a warm meal. But there is one thing I do know. I know it with a certainty like no other. I know it with every fiber of my being. I know who I am. I'm Shannon Madison.
I know Chad and Madison hurt you. I know you want revenge, but let's not be too hasty. He wiped out the entire syndicate without batting an eye. Short of raising an army, how could we ever hope to defeat him? What's that? What army?